What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're excited to be able to talk about UFC 300. I've been chomping at the bit to be able to talk about this because this was by far one of the greatest UFC events in recent history, possibly of all time, especially as stacked as it was. Uh, I think there was 12 fighters that were once champions, either former or current champions. That's incredible. Uh, and then on top of that, three different title matches all in one night, back to back to back. Uh, it was so much fun, and we're a- extremely excited to talk about it. Uh, we've got all kinds of fights that we want to kind of recap, give you our reactions, our opinions on some of uh, the fights and everything that went on. But before we get too far, I want to first mention a sponsor of ours and one that we love very much, and that is Big Frig. And I'm going to pull it up here just to show you guys to brag about the Tumblr that I've got. Uh, not only did they put our logo on them, and personalize it for us. But it's also just an amazing tumbler. I carry this or my tan one everywhere I go. Uh, You know, the tan one's a little bigger. So a lot of times in the morning when I need a little extra kick, Mm -hmm. store my coffee in there and it keeps it warm. Uh, Right now I've got some water in it because we finally reached 80 80 degree weather. And so I need some water to keep myself from getting too parched. Uh, Plus we're talking, so why not? But also they they have amazing coolers. When you talk about all of the top of the top end, top of the line coolers, you can't forget about Big Frig. And if you don't know what Big Frig coolers are all about, you need to check them out. Go to bigfrig.com. They've got the top of the line products, but on top of that, they have the top of the line prices um, and, and even better than prices that you'll see from other big name brands. And on top of that, they're going to give you 20% off just by using our code. That is rising220 at bigfrig.com. That's B I G F R I G.com. And use that code R I S I N G T O 20 for 20% off. That is an amazing deal you do not want to miss out on. Go check them out. Amazing products. I cannot express that enough. Love Big Frig, uh, and we thank them very much for sponsoring this episode. Again, go to bigfrig.com, use that code rising220 or 20% off, but let's get into talking about the UFC 300, an amazing fight night. If you were a fight fan, an MMA fan at all, and you didn't catch this fight, uh, you know, this this overall fight card, go back and watch it. It was absolutely amazing. Before I get too far into talking about these, let me first go ahead and bring in my co-hosts first across the city from me, just on the other side of the city, literally, uh, we've got Jeremy. Jeremy, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good, and I was really happy to see, even though I just caught the the main card fights due to some prior stuff that I had to take care of, um, just from what I saw from the main fight cards, that was electric, to say the least. And if you guys caught all the important ones, that's for sure. Yeah, that's the thing. I caught the most important (laughs) ones that needed to get covered. So if you didn't get the opportunity to see USC 300, I definitely highly recommend to go back and watch the entire card just because UFC 300, I I have to agree with Josh. This is, if not the best, easily a top three fights or just cards even in general for what we were able to witness to see. But there was so many great fights. I can go on and on, but I know we're all going to recap and talk about it and give our reaction. So, Josh, I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it was it was super stacked. Uh, I, I loved so much about this this fight night. I thought 299 was stacked, and I didn't give 300 enough credit, but it deserves the credit uh, and and it lived up to the hype all around it. But now across the country from us literally just on the south side of the country, down in Mobile, Alabama. We got the man, the myth, the legend. Blake, how you doing, brother? What is up, fellas? UFC 300 was a blast. Uh, Everything you ever wanted if you're into uh, mixed martial arts sports, uh, combat sports, all that good stuff. I thought that it was one of those cards where – you didn't you didn't really get up off the edge of your seat like the entire night like you you didn't want to you didn't want to have to go into the kitchen and get some food or something to drink you know because you just didn't want to miss the action it was just one of those cards where there was constant banging brawling knockouts uh submissions all the good stuff just uh, they really brought it and i thought it was a hell of an event And it's going to be hard to top something like that. But we did get the release of Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. Uh, So I think that that added a little more spice to it. So that was something I was hoping to bring up that uh, and Dustin Poirier. uh, Man, I forgot who he's going against. I think on June 1st uh, and then as well uh, on on June 1st, there is also going to be 
Uh, you've got, why am I drawing blanks on names? Uh, Paulo Costa and Sean Strickland. I assume that's whoever wins this gets Duplessis. That's just my mm. assumption. So that's exciting. I really hope because both of them, if you think about both uh, what, what happened with them. So first, uh, Costa, he lost to Duplessis. And that gave Duplessis the bump to be able to go and fight uh, what should have been, uh, you know, he should have fought Israel Adesanya, and then Sean Strickland had to step in for Duplessis. Uh, and then Strickland got the, the fight against Duplessis uh, later on. And so you, you think about that, and, and of course with Strickland fighting Duplessis, losing to, to, to Duplessis. So both of them losing to, to Drakus Duplessis at different times. Sean's a little more questionable and definitely debatable. But, yeah, I mean, that's extremely exciting. Uh, I posted something on our social media, so go follow us over there on X, Instagram, Facebook, uh, about the Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler. Extremely pumped for that, to see the notorious one come back to the UFC. And and I just want him to whoop Michael Chandler like he did with Cowboy, like that kind of a domination. I want him to do that and just ride off into the sunset. Don't step mm. a foot back in the octagon against Dustin Poirier or even Nate Diaz or anything. Mm. Just stay away and be a living legend. That's all it has to be. Uh, I absolutely love Conor McGregor. He's electrifying. If it wasn't for Conor McGregor, I think I've said this before. I, I don't think I would be a fan of the UFC. I don't know if I don't know if the UFC would be as big today. I, I really don't. It, it's 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 tough to argue against that for real. I mean, he he made it. He made it a global sport. Yeah, like he he's an icon. Uh, he look even people who hate him would pay an endless amount of money to watch him fight. Yeah, that's well, how yeah, big I mean, he is. My my brother, for example, he's kind of that way. He's like, oh, I hate Conor McGregor. Can't stand him. Oh man, he's fighting. I can't wait to go watch him. Like exactly. it, it's not. It, it's kind of that's for me. It's it's probably the same reaction that I have for Sugar Sean. I can't stand Sugar Sean one bit. Mm -hmm. There's something about him. I just, I don't like him. Uh, I don't like the crazy hair. I don't like the pink Lamborghini. None of that. But I love watching him fight. Absolutely a dog. Uh, yeah, so that's some some news that Dana broke afterwards in the press conferences, if you caught that. As soon as I heard that, he could, so he gets a note passed him. He says, well, I don't usually get this. What's this? He's reading yeah, off. Okay, cool. June 1st, we got uh, Dustin Poirier. Oh, against uh, Islam. 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 Yeah. yeah, Makhachev. So he's going against Islam. Uh, and then also the Paul Costa against Sean Strickland. That's going to be a five-round co-main event. And then he, sat, he just sat there and smiled. Smiled real big. Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler at 170. 170 or 175? I think 170. 175. 170. 170. Okay. 70? Yeah, so... Yeah. Super, super excited. I can't wait. And you know what's funny? Uh, l earlier on that night, I was talking to my uh, my cousin and my dad about it, and I was like, guys, I know it's spendy, but what you guys say we drop 2500 bucks on U a UFC 303, and they're like, why 303? <laughs> I just have this gut feeling that keeps on being all this buzz about Conor McGregor, and everyone's like, no, it's not really happening. But Dana keeps on shaking off the questions. He's not answering. Yeah. He's not saying no. He just says, yeah. ah, Conor's a... Connor's living his life, man. You know, he's he's happy. It's pretty hard for a dude to want to get, come and get his face beat in when he's living on a yacht. <laughs> and no that's kidding. all he really says. And I'm like, no, he's coming. He's coming. It's going to be UFC fight night. Uh, it's going to be the uh, international fight weekend. I'm I'm, ex I'm extremely excited for that. But let's yeah. go ahead and jump into UFC 300, recap what ha happened, uh, and kind of talk about some of these fights. First, starting off in the early prelims, Jeremy, you and I were kind of talking about this in the – the preview to UFC 300 and talking about all the fights that you see in the early prelims, even the fact that you got ranked opponents going against each other in the early prelims. That's how stacked this card is. It's not, it's no shade to the guys down there. You also saw the respect given to these fights by how many more people show up for their early prelims. I think I saw celebrities like Theo Vaughn uh, and, and a few other guys down there. A lot of UFC fighters showed up pretty early, even during the, the early prelims. Uh, so, you know, just seeing seeing celebrities and some of the lower levels even filling out because early prelims, hardly anybody's there. You have some of the upper level, some of the guys that are just like diehard fans that want to come and experience the event. So that showed it. And one of the big time events that we saw was Bobby Green and Jim Miller. This one, I, this one 100 percent lived up to the hype for me because you saw two dogs in there in the octagon fighting it out. And 
my dad and I kept on thinking like, you have to call this just based on the damage to Jim Miller alone, just based on the damage. And then there were certain times where he was getting his face beat in and there's no stoppage. Uh, I don't recall who the ref was for that fight, but I'm just thinking, man, like you have got to step in there and just be like, okay, this is, this is too much of a bloodbath. But Jim Miller, a, a true legend of, of the sport, been there for UFC 100, 200, and 300, gets in there, gets his face looking like a pumpkin beat with a baseball bat, and still walks out of there smiling. Uh, that dude is an absolute legend. Bobby Green also going going to go down as a legend. He 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 looked crisp in that entire fight. Took some big shots, ate him. Uh, guys, I I thought I thought this was a really fun fight, especially for early prelims starting off the night. Without a doubt. Yeah, look. Jim Miller, man, 23 stitches, a broken hand, and a broken toe, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, a warrior to stand in there and take that and to not give up. That's what – I think that's what everybody was striving for, too, was that 300K that was on the line. Yeah. So everybody just wanted to bang, and it, it was it was great, you know. And, and when he caught him in the first round, uh, Jim caught Bobby in the first round, and I was like, okay, you know – like like Bobby, he, he kind of figured it out, but then he got caught. And I thought Jim had a little sliver of hope there. But then Bobby kind of got it back together, and he started piecing him up. But then in that third round, he caught Bobby again. And Bobby kind of started wobbling a little bit. But Jim, I guess he, he his tank was just on E. And uh, I guess he just didn't have much to to go in and, and, uh, and just – you know, brawl for that, for that last minute or so. And then Bobby kind of collected himself. And uh, I was, I was rooting for him though, because you know, he, he, like you said, he had those moments where he got him wobbled, but he just didn't have enough to run in there and attack and jump on and press him against the cage. Uh, You could tell he had him wobbled and he's just kind of walking up there. He's getting old, man. He's getting old. Uh, And and we we talked about this one, Jeremy. I mean, Jim Miller, he's getting old. He knows, he knows where he's at. Uh, He knows he's a legend. Go, go in there for one last bang and and go give the, the fans a show is always one of the thoughts, but you also want to win. Uh, and he just couldn't quite pull out the victory, but still a legendary fight. Without a doubt. It was a it was definitely a legendary fight. And like you just mentioned, Josh, Jim Miller is getting up there in age and your body can only withstand so much more, especially in this type of a situation where you're in competitive fighting and stuff like that. But I mean, Blake, you did mention too Two good things. Jim Miller had Bobby Green wobbling, and from when I got the opportunity to see it, I thought that Jim Miller was definitely going to go out the way that me and Josh wanted to see him go out, and that was finally get the dub and get go from there and just retire. But unfortunately for Bobby – I should say for Bobby, but unfortunately that's not how it went for Jim. Then Bobby obviously yeah. got the win. Then, like, if you look at the overall strike count, that was what mind-boggled me. Like – Bobby Green went 187 for 320. Then on the other side, Jim Miller went 58 for 145. And Mm. you get into you get into those numbers, and obviously 58 around 58 percent to 40 percent. Then that's obviously how it was for the significant strikes. Obviously 58 percent then to like right around 40 percent for Bobby Green to Jim Miller. But I mean. <clears throat> yeah, like when, Josh, you, when you look at that too, like, and when you when you pull that up, and and see the strike count against Jim Miller, I mean, it's significant. Like, oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, it's just he took he took so much damage. But like I said, he's he's a warrior. Uh, he's one of those guys. Uh, he he's he's not going to back down, especially at this stage. You know, you're at the third hundred that you've been a, a, an attendance of and a, been a fighter, been a part of. Mm-hmm. you're not, not going to go down. Uh, th- this was one of the names that I threw out there. If you want an underdog pick, this is one of my threw out there. Hey, this might be an underdog that you might see win. Didn't quite work out. Didn't pan out the way that I thought and maybe hoped that it would. Um, but I, I think I even mentioned that that was kind of a, an emotional pick too. You know, just you, you got to root for the, for the legend, man. Like mm-hmm. he doesn't have much more. Uh, I don't know if he announced his retirement yet since fighting, but it wouldn't surprise me if he announced it uh, just because – Man, you you've had a, you've had an amazing career, uh, and I think you went out on top with this kind of a this kind of a yeah. uh, you know even though you you lost in the octagon, you you hung in there taking a beating and still delivered some strikes and some moments uh, that definitely had the fans on their feet. Uh, I mean, 
you, you talk about talk about some some turnarounds. Uh, you know, where, where we thought maybe Jim Miller could have had that turnaround moment. Uh, one that I didn't really really plan on talking about this one, but I remember the fight. Uh, it was Jalen Turner and uh, Moicano, where Jalen Turner. There was a moment I can't remember what round it was. I think it was in the first round, if I remember correctly, um, that he knocked Moicano on his butt. And Moicano yeah. got stiff for a second, but it wasn't a complete stiff knockout. He was still reacting. The ref let everything go, and Jalen Turner just stayed back off of him. And yeah. then he looks over at the ref and complains like, "What? You didn't call it? Well, no, I'm not calling it yet. He's fine. Keep on going." I, I hate that for fighters because you have that instinct in you that once they drop and once you feel it, because you you can feel it when you got the good connection in there. He felt it. I don't want to see a fighter going in there on somebody who's cold and hammer fisting them. It's exciting, but that that sucks, man. Like, but at the same time, that's what you got to do. You got to secure the victory. You wait until the referee pulls you off. Moicano ends up coming back and putting the TKO over to Jalen Turner. That was one fight that I thought was incredible to watch, just because of the complete turnaround. You got your your butt, you know, you know knocked on your butt, and then you turn around and uh, able to knock Jalen Turner out over in the in the second round. My thing with that is when when Jalen when Jalen knocked him down, I, I I go a lot off of body language, man, and that right there kind of told me when he looked at Herb and was like, "Hey, why didn't you call it?" All right, what your guy wasn't he wasn't unconscious. All right, he was on his back, but he was still he was still alert. He, he was waiting was for not you unconscious. To, he he got yeah. stiff a little bit when he fell, but he was reacting still. Uh, and so yeah, I, I'm, and I'm totally 100%. Uh, it was Herb Dean in that fight. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm 100% with her because like it was, it was He's not worth back. stopping. Yeah. And, and that's my, that's my thing with Jalen is like, after that moment, I was like me and all my buddies, we were like, Hey, he's losing this fight. Yeah. Because that's, that's what my, my dad was saying. I, I said, I want to yeah, go yeah, on yeah. DraftKings right now and bet whatever, whatever I got to bet to make sure you know that I secure some money on this. Cause I, I, I bet the odds would have gone the other way, um, mm-hmm. but that's in my opinion, man. Like, like that's um, it, it's just body language. It's a body language thing. It's it's basically you were pleading to Herb, like why didn't you why didn't you call it? Because I don't really want to be in here anymore. Reminds me of the little that's giants. A- blow the whistle, ref. <laughs> blow the whistle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Running around in circles. But yeah, that that one was just funny to me. Uh, and then just kind of karma, you know. Like it, you you brought it up a minute ago. Um, because we, we mentioned this, Dana White in the press conferences, he gets pressured about up in the ante a little bit. Hey, make the, the the fight bonuses for the fight of the night and performance of the night. Up those up, and he said, "What do I up it to? Double, you know, make it, you know, make it a hundred thousand. Uh, how about three hundred thousand? Yeah, three hundred thousand. Everybody's chiming in. He looks around, three hundred thousand. All right, done. That's amazing. But you know, you talked about it where all the fighters are fighting for that three hundred thousand. How in the hell do you think you're going to get that three hundred thousand dollar bonus when you don't even know how to jump on top of a dude and finish him? <laughs> like yeah. that just that to me was just like you weren't even trying to fight for the three hundred thousand. You weren't trying to fight for the win. But you know, yep. hats off to Moicano because I think that's it's a little bit demoralizing when you get knocked on your butt like that with a clean hit, and because he did get knocked back pretty hard, mm-hmm. but to get back up, finish the fight, and end up finish finishing him off in the second round. I mean, hats off to you because. That's that's incredible. But yeah. let's jump on to another legendary fight because of, of everything that took place with this. Uh, you've got Holly Holm, who is a legend, and the the women's side of MMA, UFC. She has been around for so long. If I remember correctly, the first to ever knock out Ronda Rousey. Mm-hmm. She That's how she won her belt. And, you know, she's still up there. Uh, I was really hoping to see... Holly win this one and somehow like get her her way up to fight Raquel, you know, like work her way to fight Raquel. That would have been really fun. Um, but another part of it, because whenever I talked to Raquel, I was kind of in, in agreement with her. She mentioned that if Kayla Harrison, if she ends up winning this fight, then most likely that's going to boost her up. She might have one more fight, and she's got a lot of eyes on her where she might jump ahead in the line to go and fight for the title. And it's not that. I don't think Raquel's scared. It's just she wants to see somebody who's earned that through the UFC 
Kayla Harrison, you know, regardless of what I think about that, you know, how, how she needs to get a few more wins under her belt, she looked 100% dominant against a legend, against an overall dominant woman uh, in, in the octagon. She So uh, total strikes, 68 to 7. Kayla Harrison won. Uh, Holly Holm did surprise us because when Kayla Harrison went to take, get a takedown, Holly Holm reversed it really fast. I don't know what the heck she was thinking, though. Stand up. That is that is not your game. You do not go against somebody. What what is it? Is it judo that she's known for, uh, Kayla Harrison? Is, is it Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu judo? Or Muay Thai. Something like that. It, it's She's an Olympic gold, gold medalist uh, in one of the two. Uh, and so you you don't – that's what she's known for, and that's what she's trained in. She's yeah. learned some striking, and she proved that. She, she delivered some heavy blows – uh, and, and even her, her previous fight, but in your debut, getting to go against a legend like this, she lived up to the hype for sure, and she definitely looked like she could be a dominant force in you know this this division for the women uh, in the bantamweight. Uh, and so, you know, Kayla Harrison, that's definitely a name to mark down. Uh, I know we we talked about it, Jeremy. Uh, Kayla Harrison, if she wins this one, this is a name you're probably going to hear more often in the future. I honestly think you're already getting – this was just the beginning for Kayla Harris, and to be completely honest with you, like you mentioned, having almost a 75% strike percentage against a legend like Holly Holmes, that's unbelievable. Somebody who's known for striking and standing exactly. up and knocking you out. Exactly, and that's the thing. Like When we were talking the other night about this, I mean – you just think about Holly Holmes' reputation and record and what she's had to go to go through to get to this situation. I mean, Holly Holm has been around the block and she's fought a lot of big name fighters like you always just mentioned. She's the only female to knock out Ronda Rousey. I mean, how many females can go around and say, Yeah, I knocked out Ronda. That was that was impressive. I mean most uh, of the time think, you swing yeah. on Ronda, she gets a hold of your arm and puts you in an arm bar. Well, exactly. I mean, even if you were to try and do that, I just get you just get wind burn probably from the situation. <laughs> but I mean, hats off to Kayla Harrison, especially for this type of a situation, having a debut, none other than at UFC 300. I mean, you couldn't have had it go any better, honestly, for a debut, especially on this kind of a on this kind of a, a fight leading up to it. So my hats is off to her, and she's got a lot ahead of her in future. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, uh, time is time has passed Holly by. By the way, and yeah, uh, yeah, for sure, it, she's not yeah, the same it, Holly as she was even yeah. three to five years ago. You know, and you can yeah. tell. But I, I still yeah. love watching her fight. I I still think she's she's got it in her. I mean, she looks athletic for as old as she's getting. Uh, but yeah, she definitely needs to hang it up. I think, uh, and and I don't want to see her go. You know, I'm my dad and I were talking about that. All the legends are leaving, man. Cowboy Cerrone, Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, you know, you go back even even further. You know, of course, we we talk about Conor McGregor. He's still trying to keep his his head in, head in, in the game and everything. But a guy like Jose Aldo or uh, uh, GSP, you know, like there's a lot of legends are, are gone, man. Like I don't want to see all the legends leave, but there's got to be a time for everybody. Mm. You didn't mention John Jones. I'm not counting him out yet. I'm not counting. Okay. Him out. Okay. Good. 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 I think I think he's got something left in him. There we go. I like to hear that. I just want to see one more. I want to see I one more. I do, too. More. And, and I, I feel the same way with Connor, but uh, my cousin, he was saying the other night, he's like, yeah, well, you're going you're gonna to keep on saying that. And I said, no, I, I, I said with the Cowboy fight, like, man, that was amazing. I loved it. Thank you for everything you've done. Step away from the sport, man. Keep yourself yeah. out of trouble. Go, go do well with your businesses because he's got a couple of them. Go get into your acting career. Maybe you can take a few a few lessons on how to actually act because uh, you didn't act very well. But I still loved it. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, but Kayla Harrison, though, man, I, she she really she looked like she belonged in that match for sure. I know Holly's not what she's she used to be, uh, and, and that's definitely a part of it. But she lived up to the hype, I think, and she she was as good, if not better, than I was expecting her to look uh, in that fight for sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I I tell you one thing, she's a rising star on that side in the yeah. women's, uh, and I think she she needs to get that title fight uh, to to just bring the juice, man, bring the juice. I, I want to see I want to see the stars out, and I think she's a star. If if she does get that title fight, I want Raquel to whoop her. Just hey hey hey, I'm cool listen, with that. you're great, 
but know your place. Go through a few more people, then come challenge the champ. Go yeah. go fight, you know, Juliana. Go fight. Uh, I don't I don't know if is Amanda Nunez still in or did she retire? I think she retired. Uh-huh. Yeah, go go fight go fight a couple other a couple other chicks, you know, and then then come see the champ. You you step yeah. back and know your place. Yeah. But now you know it's. I, I just feel like there's so many so many girls too that in, in that division that have been in it for a while, and so I feel like they deserve. I think Juliana, uh, you know, that was when I was talking to Raquel. She she brought up Juliana. That's the one that she wants to see. Plus, there's a lot of history back there, and she kind of explained some of that story too. If you guys haven't seen that episode, definitely go back and watch. I, I loved getting to talk to her. She she kind of shined a lot of light on her her kind of week, even leading up to that championship fight, uh, and then just everything that went into it. I mean, she. She's definitely a legend. Uh, one fight that I didn't want to talk about is Aljamain Sterling against Calvin Guitar. Aljamain, you were born. You talked about there wasn't many fights that you could just get up and walk to the kitchen. This is one yep. of them. Uh, I mean, you're just boring, man. Like, how are you ever holding a belt in your hand? That's what I want to know. Uh, Sugar Sean definitely exposed him. I I thought he was a great fighter going against Calvin Guitar, and I know Calvin's a good fighter. He owned the match. Don't get me wrong. But you just held him down on the ground. You didn't even try to do anything while you were on the ground. So that one just annoyed me. Josh, you know there was only uh, one fight where they didn't give a post-game uh, interview? <laughs> I didn't even recognize it. It was Aljamain. Yeah, that makes really? sense. Yeah, yeah <laughs> because they said, they said Dana was so mad because they just laid there. And he was they like, did. hey, I didn't put you on this card to just lay here. Right, so I get I, I get really annoyed with fans booing in certain moments, uh, and I'm trying to think of which one there was where they kept on booing, and I was like, no, 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 you can't boo right now. Like they're actually working. These are this yeah. is just two great grapplers going at it, and you can tell the, the difference. Charles fight. What was it? Charles Charles, uh, Charles Olivier. Yeah, that was it. That was it. It was yeah. two great grapplers going against each other. Yeah. That that was an amazing fight. We'll get that, to that one in a second. Um, yeah, and so so there's certain times like the the Oliveira fight when they were booing. Like no, you can see these guys both sitting there like working, and Char- Charles got the got the overhooks over on him, and yeah. he's keeping his arms down, and then he's getting some damage in here and there. You can't boo at that kind of stuff. All Jermaine Sterling uh, and and Calvin Guitar, I, I don't really put it on Calvin Guitar. All Jermaine Sterling is a great grappler, a uh, great ground game, and he was he was the reason why that one got so boring and why I mean he was scared. That's that's the way I'm gonna say it. He was scared. He didn't want he didn't want Calvin Qatar to get up and pound him a couple of times because he knew what happened whenever Sean O'Malley got got that left hook on, or I get the right I guess the right hook yeah. hook in on him uh, back in that title fight so he didn't want that to happen again with Calvin Qatar and get exposed again how weak of a chin he's got there's there's all the spotlight I'm willing to give on that one unless you guys got any more on no, it was terrible, no, yeah. it was terrible. Uh, it was. you need to color your hair to whatever what's the color of sadness. I forget. There's a color of sadness. Maybe maybe uh-huh. blue. Blue fits it because it's water, tears. I don't know. Yeah. You'll cry yourself to sleep. But let's go over to the performance of the night. I was, I was very excited about this one. Uh, I wanted to see Yuri Prohaska come in and win. He was on my parlay to, to win. He absolutely dominated. I, he, he was amazing in this fight. This was an overall very good fight against uh, Rakic. Uh, and, man, like these are two sluggers going in there and just having it out. Uh, and both of them finding big time moments. There was several moments where it felt like, man, Yuri might get put on his butt, and he just he takes a big old hit, spits it out, and just comes back and and fires back with another one. He's he's amazing at that. Uh, he can do everything too. I, I've I haven't seen a, a part of his game where he's weak. Uh, and so hats off to him for congratulations because he also won one of the three hundred thousand dollar bonuses. So he got the performance of the night, winning that one. Uh, he was he was an amazing fight. I love Yuri Prohaska, and I want to see now that he won this fight. And I've I've been saying this the entire time leading up to this. He deserves another shot at Alex Pereira. I don't think he was going to win against Alex Pereira, but it was called at the worst timing. Go back and watch that fight. He was not he was not done. He was no, not done, and especially if you've seen, uh, you know, Yuri Prohaska against Teixeira. Go back and watch that fight and the slugs that that Yuri Prohaska can take. He wasn't done with with Alex Pereira. Would Alex Pereira finish him? I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think he was he was done yet. And so I don't like the way that that one got called. Um, so I hope Yuri Prohaska gets his shot. I hope he's his next fight 
is, is for the title again, getting a second chance against Alex Pereira. Um, but congratulations to him because he won that three hundred thousand dollar bonus. Yeah, he put on a show, man. Uh, I look. That's one thing I like, Jeremy. Is is I like to see two guys stand up and bang. All yeah. right? And and it was just back and forth, back and forth. Uh, it, it was one of those that, like I said earlier, you didn't want to get up off the couch, right? You were you were right there, locked in, uh, and and it was a it was a fun one. Anytime, I, I like to see two guys. You know, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of walking down or any, they're they're in the middle of the ring and they're going blow for blow. That's what I love to see. And I, it was just one of those fights where that's what they were doing. That there was no. Uh, running from each other, there was no, you know, backpedaling. Somebody having to push the issue. Uh, it was constant. Two guys throwing, throwing hands, and uh, I see why they won the big bonus. You know. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, I'm in the same boat. Those are the kind of fights that I love to see. Just all brawl, no running, and just letting the haymakers have it. I mean, this was definitely a fight that you knew it was going to be. It was going to be a tough fight. Yeah, I mean, I'm thankful I caught a little bit of the end of this fight. Like, I didn't get to catch all of it like I wanted to. But still, you caught the you caught the part, the meat of it. Yeah, I caught the meat of it. That's why I was really excited when I got there and I saw them like perfect. This is one. Of the yeah, you I saw it once they started trading blows. And yeah, that's when it I got mean, exciting. They were going off like a dog to a meat locker. I mean. Even talking about like strikeage wise, it was fifty eight to fifty three percentage in favor of Yuri. And I mean, even obviously the same thing with significant strikes, fifty eight to fifty three, of course. But I mean, I love like I said, those kind of fights are the ones that I would love to watch every single fight. But I know every fighter is obviously not like that. I mean, there are some fights that you can watch that are really technical, and you can get in the side control, or you can get those those spinning heel kicks right to the midsection, just just even watching those kind of kind of moves that they put on, it just hurts me. And that's how it always is in almost every fight. Like you see one punch or even one kick to the calf. Like Josh, I know you and I joke around this all the time. Here, let me just stand here. You can just give me a full fledged kick right to the calf, and let's see how <laughs> it feels. I mean, uh, I, I'll tell you what. There's a reason why they do what they do, and they put on a show for all of us. And I'm just the kind of guy to sit in a chair and just watch it and eat popcorn and just enjoy every single little bit of it. So I, I will say I'm I'm kind of weird in that way. Uh, I've 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 seen other fighters. Like I know I saw, saw Sean Strickland in an interview where he talked about it the same way. Like I'm kind of the same way sometimes where there's certain, there's certain scenarios where I just, I like the pain, you know, like I come here real quick, kick me in, kick me in a leg. Let me, let me feel that a little bit so I can wake myself yeah. up and let's get going. You know, like yeah. it's, that's, that's how some of these fighters are for sure. Uh, I know, I know Sean Strickland's one of them cause he, he came out and was like, man, I, I love the feeling of, of whenever somebody tries leg, leg, or, you know, they leg kick me and I can check them cause it, it it's going to hurt both of you. And yeah. just being able to deliver that back, knowing that it hurt him just a little bit more, uh, you know, stuff like that, definitely, definitely exciting. But yeah, these two guys were dogs. Uh, Yuri Prohaska deserved that three hundred thousand, uh, and just the total, total strikes like you brought up, Jeremy, dead on, almost even uh, overall, mm -hmm. and just they were both landing big ones. And there wasn't, there wasn't some of this, you know, the the, the light, uh, what, what you see kind of in the lightweight or featherweight, uh, where you see just fast, you know. Just 150 finally. punches. There was only you know 50, 60 punches on each side, but they were heavy. They, these are big boys. Uh, this is over in the light heavyweight that we're talking about now. That's where it comes into play. Uh, and so yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. But let's go on. Uh, I guess real quick, touching on Bo Nickel. Uh, I, I did think the funny thing about him was that whenever he he got done with the fight, we were we were talking about it, Jeremy. Like he looks like disappointed right now. And, yeah, and he finally finally gets the finally gets the win by submission, and he stands up and he tells him, "Yeah, I'm kind of pissed off. Like, I just didn't. I should I should have dominated. I thought really thought that I was going to come in here and win this one a lot more. Um, definitely a name that you're going to see more in the UFC. Mm -hmm. That dude, he he might be holding a belt in the next couple of years. He might be holding a belt. Uh, he's in the middleweight, so I guess he would have to go through right now. Is it's Duplessis? So you're talking, man. That's that's a stacked. That'd be tough. And that is a stacked weight class over in the middleweight. Because you got Duplessis, Sean Strickland, uh, Paula Costa that we talked about, uh, and then you've got Israel Adesanya. I mean, that's it's stacked. Uh, Alex Pereira, I think, has stepped down to middleweight a couple of times. 
uh, yeah, that's that's a scary weight class to go through. But I think Bo Nickel at at the right right chances, I think he could he could be holding the belt here uh, in, the, in the next next uh, couple of years. But did you, did you guys have anything on on Bo Nickel? I think he was more. I think Bo was more upset uh, that it's the first time that we've kind of seen him get touched a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when he did get touched, we were all like, Oh, you know, and it kind of, it kind of, yeah, it kind of threw us off a little bit because we've never seen him get touched before. And we were just kind of like, I mean, Cody oh. Brundage is, is no joke. He's got heavy hands, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. And 100% the toughest opponent he's faced. Uh, so, no doubt. you know, it was, I, I think he did really well for what he was going against. I thought it was better than him, you know, obviously saying, hey, uh, this was a terrible performance. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I think that was a little overboard. I thought he I thought he had a heck of a fight. He's got uh, high expectations. I, yeah, I get why he did it. So, I mean, yeah. it's understandable. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's it's pretty similar. Like, whenever I talked to Raquel, she felt like she had a bad fight. Like, Man, you own that fight. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, the, the, whole, the whole time, there was no question about who was going to hold the belt at the end. Define um, so, bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, just uh, I, I thought it was a pretty good fight, uh, and and he's got a lot more ahead of him. They they threw up a stat for for Bo Nickel. His last four fights combined was a total of five minutes and forty five seconds. Yeah, that's insane. Wow, you're talking four fights combined, ending them in you know five Under. minutes and forty five seconds. That's wow. incredible. That's you're just over a minute that's apiece. Nuts. So. Uh, that was a lot of fun, but one that I was excited about, and I, I want to talk about this one. Get your guys' thoughts. I know, I know, Jeremy, you and I talked about it because we were watching this one together. Uh, Charles Oliveira. I'm going to try to leave emotion out of it. I had, I had a, a couple of parlays. Charles Oliveira was an underdog, but I was like, I don't know why he's an underdog. He should win this fight. And so I put him on my safe bet parlay. I had had a safe bet parlay where I had three that I was like, ah, they're going to win. Uh, and Charles Oliveira was on both of these. Had another one where I needed five. I wasn't sure about Yuri. I thought Yuri Prohaska should win. Uh, and then there was another one that I had on there too. Um, so I, Charles Oliveira cost me both of them because of this loss. He goes through all three rounds. I felt like the entirety of, of this match, even though he took quite a few strikes, a lot of those strikes weren't significant. A lot of those strikes weren't really landing a ton of damage. And I felt like even though there was the strike count there, the control, even when, when Charles was on the bottom, you still saw him have a lot of the control, getting those overhooks under like we talked a moment ago uh, and, and keeping him in close. He had submission attempts several times and, and a couple of them, man, like I think it was the first round. I don't know how he got out of that thing. He was in there for 15 seconds at least and yeah. kept on fighting. I was like, oh, it's over. He's done. Call it. Call it. He's going to tap. And somehow he gets himself out of it. Uh, Armand put on an amazing fight, and I don't want to take anything away from him, but there was a split decision, and Armand ends up winning by one point. I didn't think Armand did enough to win the fight. I did feel like it was probably worthy of a draw, but Charles Oliveira, to me, I think he he owned the match. He he controlled it, and, and so to me, I mean, I know he took some damage with the strikes, but but I I think a lot of like the, the submission holds that he was getting him in uh, and, and just overall control put a lot of damage. It's not going to be physical damage that you can see, but he's, he's got damage too. And so uh, to me, I, I felt like that one felt to me like it was Char Charles Oliveira at best for Armand, a draw just because they both had their moments. But I mean, yeah. Blake, I don't, I don't know what your, your thoughts were on that fight. I had Charles losing and to me, it come down to the, to the third round. Uh, I felt like Charles couldn't go. I, I felt like he couldn't go to the ground. Uh, and if he got taken to the ground, I felt like he was, it was a loss. And once he got taken to the ground, I was like, all right, man. I, it just, it felt when like. he was on top, he was doing a lot of good things. When he's on bottom, like I said, I felt like he was controlling down there, but he wasn't able to get anything in to create something, I guess. Until the last 20 seconds. I thought when he flattened him out, I thought when Charles locked it in and he flattened him out, I thought he went limp. All right. Yeah. I thought I thought I thought he was out, so I was like, call it Charles one. Charles I, I won. thought so too. 
Yeah, and, and, and he, he, he had him, he had him like full on. He gave a thumbs yeah. up, but then like ten seconds yeah. later, no movement at all, no yeah. movement. And I was yeah. like, "What's going on here? How, like he's not breathing, right?" But yeah. then he hops right up. I feel like he was out for a second. I, he had, I really do. I felt like that too. I felt and, like and that so too. that was yeah. that was another part of it that I was like, "Man, I don't know. I I don't feel comfortable giving it to Armand as a win because I don't think he ever did anything that was like." Close to knocking Charles out, close to getting him in a hold. Yeah, Charles had several moments. I think th- three moments, if I remember correctly, where he had submission attempts. Four, four, four submission attempts. Uh, that, and I'm pretty sure at least one per round. That it felt like was really close to winning, and he just didn't quite finish it. I, I don't know. I mean, it was it was hard for me. I, I'm not mad that Armand won. I, I am because I could have won a thousand bucks and not having to spend much on it. But I, I do think Armand, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him that he got the win. I just, I didn't feel right about it. I think he got robbed out of it, to be honest with you a little bit. But just, that was the big thing that, that got me. You get Charles that had those four submission attempts. And I understand that you still put on a heck of a show to the crowd then i'm in the same but I'm, t- I'm i'm taking nothing against armin that they were both given everything that they physically have for ufc 300 but mm-hmm. i i still think that charles Oliveira. not i'm not just saying that for your parlay josh but i mean it was definitely something that that was definitely it was I, I honestly would have gave it a sincere draw just because to you know, me it was... You know what's funny? So, uh, what was it? It was... Which one was it? It was 297 up in Canada, right? Up in Toronto? Yeah. That was the Strickland Duplessis fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a parlay and there was like two or three decisions that we were like, how the heck are you giving the decision over to, to, that, like, to that side? Uh, mm-hmm. And so I told my wife, I told her, I was like, I'm never betting on UFC again. It's just stupid. <laughs> uh, and then... You know, I told her, I said, yeah, I put in a, put in a couple of parlays. And she said, didn't you say you're not betting on UFC anymore? I was like, yeah, babe, but trust me, I'm smart this time. I took a safe <laughs> bet. <and> then <laughs> I took a safe bet that's going to win me my money back and then some. And then I took another one that's just going to cash big time if it all hits. I was like, but there's a couple that I'm not so sure about. So I took this safe bet. She's like, oh, okay, cool. And then she checked in on me at the end of the night. I was like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder she was upstairs. I didn't want to go down and talk to you just because he should have won a K bar, but we got 10 bucks. <laughs> bet responsibly, everybody. I, I'm not out here. Without betting, a doubt. I, I know your bankroll. Uh, play, play it like it. Like This is what I like. What I told Jeremy whenever he first got into, like, hey, what, what are you doing? You're like, what, what's this all about? Uh, you play it like a game that you want to win. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't play Madden and just go Hail Mary every time, even though it would be exactly. cool if I could hit it. I play Madden and I'm going to run up the middle and draw that defense inside. And then every once in a while I, I see the, the DB, the, the corner step up and the safety go over to the center center of the field. And I know I can lob it up to Mike Evans out on the left side. That's how, that's how you play sports oh, betting. Brother. You play Fast. smart and, and you know, you, you know what your limits are. You know what you can and can't do. You're not going to try to heave it deep against the Baltimore Ravens defense. Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing and, be well, responsible. Base, you uh-huh. Just pull out magic. E- even though I lose a lot, I'm smart with it, and I'm not <laughs> out here spending all my money. I promise, guys. I don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, amazing fight. I-, I personally felt like Charles won it, especially like you said there at the end. I don't. Know, it felt like he was out. It felt like Armand was out. But then whenever the the bell rung, I don't know if the bell woke him up. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird to me because because Charles was even looking over and like, oh, I got it. I got it. I, he's out, right? And he's looking at the ref smiling. And then, like, the bell rings, and he gets up, and he's like, that. And he looks down, and, like, all of a sudden, our mom pops right up. Like, what just what? happened? <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. Yep. Yep. But, man, let's go over to, man, easily the fight of the night, if not the the best 10 seconds of the night. <laughs> Going to the BMF, who is the baddest mother effer in the land. I was really hoping that, mm. that you know, I, maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe this is wrong of me to say. I just wanted to hear Bruce Buffer actually say it. 
That's that's all Everybody I wanted to hear. Did. I just wanted him to say <laughs> for the baddest, you know. But he there didn't say it. That's, that's that okay. That Keep it a PG. It We're that. paying pay per view, man. You can you can say it, Bruce. You can yeah. say it. But Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. Personally, I I know the strike count. I know I know all that stuff. You look at it. Uh, it, it was it was easily Holloway all the way. But I pulled this up just <laughs> just to show it. Zero takedowns. Zero submission attempts. Uh, obviously, with that, no reversals or anything. This was all on the feet. Blake, you were talking about, we like to see two guys step in the middle of the octagon and let's have it out. That's what this is all about. And I love that these two fighters, uh, or even uh, back whenever he fought uh, Dustin Poirier, but Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier, or back whenever Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal fought for this title, they knew what this title meant. It's not a title like you're you're winning a championship. It's not that you're you're the best in your weight division. It's it's that you're you're the two baddest MFers out there in the octagon, and you're gonna prove why you're you're that person, why you're that guy. Uh, and Max Holloway even says it himself. I'm him. Uh, I absolutely loved this fight many from times? the from the first second. You know, the first little bit. I feel like the first couple minutes was a little bit of tagging up. You could tell. So it was weird to me because Max Holloway is such a good boxer. He was keeping just the right amount of distance from Justin Gaethje. Gaethje had the reach on him. Gaethje has the power on him. Max just has the precision and the speed. When you saw both these guys in the first couple of rounds, man, they were throwing and it was fast. It was it like I don't know how you are able to miss anything. One thing I think does, uh, that uh, Justin Gaethje did poorly is he attacked that front leg of Max Holloway, and oh he was leaning on, on it hard, and he attacked it, but he didn't attack it enough. Uh, I really thought for sure that he, because that's that's what Justin's known for. Take that leg out and knock you down because you can't stand on it anymore, and then I'm going to pound you. He didn't He didn't really attack that too much. I think he was distracted a lot at the end of the first round. Max Holloway kind of got lucky with where his foot landed because of the way that Justin came down and tried to duck it. Um, ended up busting his nose, blood all over. He can't breathe through his nose, got blood in his mouth. He can't breathe through his mouth very well. And I think that was a lot of the distraction for Justin Gaethje. Still a heck of a fight, and I love the fact last 10 seconds right here. We're, we're not we're not going against the fence. We're not going to hug it out. We're going to end it the right way, right here in the middle of the octagon, and we're having it out. And then Max Holloway does the unthinkable and has what Joe Rogan calls, and I agree with him, the, the greatest knockout of all time with one second left on the clock mm -hmm. out cold. Uh, and we, we were a little nervous. I think a lot of people were nervous for Justin. Like, is that dude still alive? <laughs> like he, he went limp for a long time uh, and he had me scared for a little bit, but heck of a fight by both of them. They both got a $300,000 bonus. And then Max got fight of the, uh, the, the performance of the night on top of it to get $600,000, 600 K man to your bank account. I, does that all show up in just one swoop? You know, like it's a direct transfer. Just, all of a sudden you wake yeah. up and you got 600K in your, your bank account. Uh, mm. But congratulations to him. And this this was exactly what this fight was supposed to be. Yeah, look, I think what, what got Justin was the kick to the nose. Uh, and and you could tell it bothered him. He, he couldn't breathe out of his nose. He was having to breathe out of his mouth. And if you notice, Justin, every about 15 seconds, he would reach and he would grab his nose. He would constantly yeah. grab his nose. And uh, I feel like once Max figured out the distance, he knew that he was faster than Justin. But once he figured out that distance, he knew it was on and he could beat Justin. I felt like in order for Justin to win the fight, I knew it wasn't going to happen, but I felt like Justin had to take him down once or twice. And that's just... I'm glad he Justin, didn't, because that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not what this fight is about. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Uh, but I'll tell you something. The baddest thing about Max Holloway is when he pointed to Justin and he said, hey, right here, right now. That's movie stuff. All right, that's I got, the I got chills. I got yeah, it's, it's theater, dog. Like, like that is stuff you see in the movies. Because a lot of guys, that they would just dance around for the last ten seconds and say, "Hey, look, I won the fight. It's over. Like, I'm the BMF champion." No, he said, "Hey, right here, I'm gonna take the chance of getting knocked out because we're here to put on a show." And that's what Max and, Holloway and Max is. Max got a tagged show. a couple of times. Like, I was yeah. like, "Ooh, is Max gonna go he down?" Did. Oh no, nope, nope, he stayed up. Like. It was it was amazing. That's that's very similar. That's what Sean Strickland and Duplessis did 
And I was like, yeah. heck yeah. Like, let's let's go at it. Sean's like, we're both men. We're standing right here. Uh, and then you see the same thing there from Max Holloway. Uh, I absolutely love that. I love the sportsmanship there too to, mm-hmm. hey, I won this. I won this. Here's your shot. Here's your shot. If you want to win it, prove why you should win it. Uh, and mm. and both of them are deserving of this this shot. Both of them are, are legends of the sport. A uh, mm-hmm. hundred and or so, sorry, two hundred and eighty four total strikes landed in this this fight. That's, That's insane. That's insane. And most wow. of them were to Justin Gaethje's face. But uh, it, it was pretty split overall. It was a hundred and eighty one to a hundred and three. Uh, so you know it, it wasn't. It wasn't an outlandish number, uh, you know, on the other side, but you're still landing almost almost 80 more shots yeah. landing them. But, yeah. Jeremy, I mean, this one this one was 100% the baddest MF ever. Oh, dude, we were talking so many so many times during this fight, like, who the heck is going to win this thing? Just because it was so much of a – so much – so even just because you can't really pick – between Justin Gaethje's determination, like Blake said, every 15 seconds you see him go for his nose and try and find maybe a way to even breathe out of his nose, but obviously his nose is broken. You could, so you could see him really blowing out of it, but that's that's a yeah, bad exactly. thing. I think they even mentioned that because um, yeah. you can actually cause it to kind of clot up in there and make it worse. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean. <clears throat> that was that was scary like to see the way that Justin Gaethje went down. Like That was – terrifying for me I, like, I watched that I, I downloaded it on wobble. my phone and everything and watched that I sat there and watched that last 10 seconds probably 20 times today look, I sat there and he, I was like watching it like dang I can't believe that happened I still can't believe that happened yeah and then, and then like looked, something would come up in the day and I'd be thinking about it again I pull it up on my phone like dang that really happened yeah <laughs> he literally drops like a tree straight to the dirt I mean yeah straight even, up limp even think of how like everybody was literally coming over each shoulder just to get him picked up. I mean, mm-hmm. we were saying that over the time. Is he okay? Is he alive? I yeah, mean, like I'm, I'm happy for for Max, but can we stop for a second and check on this yeah, dude? Yeah, check like, and make sure this dude's not face dead? down I mean, in the mat. He can't breathe as, as it is in the like if he's if he's unconscious right now. Like I'm kind of worried he's going to start choking on his blood and stuff. Well, that's because uh, you know all that I mean, blood that that was that's a part of it. Like he couldn't breathe through his nose. Then it's dripping into his mouth, and he can't breathe out of his mouth. He's trying to like wipe it away from his lips so he can just breathe a little bit. Um, yeah. The fact that he ends this basically all the way—I mean, it, it went all the, all the entire. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what was this? Five rounds? Four minutes? Uh, and yeah, so twenty-five minutes. Uh, you can you can take that last second out if you want. He still yeah. went twenty-five minutes of fighting, basically. Uh, yeah. Just incredible fight. Uh, absolutely so lived up to the hype. Another one that lived up to the hype. Zhang Wei Li against Jan. Uh, oh, this geez. was a really fun one. We were talking about this. I was like, man, I feel like Zhang's going to knock her out. Uh, she's just got that power. And Jan came out there, man. She surprised Strong. me big time. She came out there and she she showed that she kind of deserved. She definitely deserved to be in this fight. Um, these Chinese women, man, they are something different. They're a different breed because these two girls, they they were out there. Uh, these these two women, uh, they were out there. Putting on a show. Uh, one thing with with Zhang Wei Li was just how fast her strikes are. I knew that was going to happen. Um, I still want to hear somebody explain how this was. So at the end of the first round, mm-hmm. Zhang Wei Li had Yan in a in a, 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 a what was it? Was it rear naked hold or was it was it a, a rear trying, naked was, hold? It was a rear naked. Uh, she she had her in that for a long time, and yeah. it was deep, and you could tell she was going out and. I, I brought it up to you guys because you guys didn't catch it at first. I said, no, she tapped. She tapped, but it was she just did. after the bell. She reaches up and taps and it like passes out. And then like the, the referee like kind of shakes her and gets her up. She's like standing up, stumbling all over the place. And then uh, Joe Rogan called it. He said, I don't know if that's legal. The cut man put salts in her nose. Mm-hmm. I, I want to hear an explanation to that. And if it is legal, that shouldn't be legal. Because yeah, shouldn't if be. if you didn't do that, Zhang Wei Li walks out there, knocks a couple of good punches punch and knocks her done. out. Like I, that, there's no person. doubt in my mind. Uh, and so that one was a little shocking to me. But Jan, after that, she ended up going the entire distance. Really surprising to me because she was taking a beating. Uh, she was, you know, uh, Zhang was just all over her, uh, and, and it was very impressive fight from Jan to be able to stick it out through the through the five rounds, regardless. 
one thing I'll say about this one real quick, I'll make it short and sweet, is I do think it should have been called right there at the end of the first round. Yeah. But the one thing about this fight is Max and Justin took a little bit of the sting away from it. For sure. Uh, in my opinion. Yeah. It, sure. it was I, like, how do you follow that up? You know? And and they, they th- this was a great fight too, man. Like, yeah. We, we talk about this all the time. Like, women, and, and I, I can now confidently say it because I heard it from Raquel, Raquel herself. Women feel like they have something to, to prove in the UFC and they mm-hmm. go out there and they prove it uh, and they put yeah. it all out there. Th- this was definitely one of them. Yeah. Without 100%. A doubt. I mean, Jan completely blew my expectations out of the water. I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. it, it's still, I still want to know the explanation with the salt sticks. Um, because literally, you saw that instant happen, and all of a sudden, once that hit, she immediately became a brand new person and just. Yeah, she all of a sudden she was awake. She wasn't stumbling yeah, anymore. Nope. Yeah. She didn't that look doesn't like happen. She, yeah, that doesn't she didn't happen look naturally. Like she, yeah, she didn't look like she had one too many the night before. I mean, all of a sudden, she just came out and just ready to go for the remainder of the fight. I mean, hats off to her just because the thing that blew my mind so much is how much Zhang Wei Li got Yan into submission holds, and she would just lay there and take it. And you're getting into these submission holds for at least a good bare minimum 15 seconds. Uh-huh. And she's just not even budging almost. Like, you can see her squirm and try and do whatever she could to get out of it. But she was she was cool as a cucumber and just trying to obviously maintain her breathing and not get herself passed out, then get into the, the overall outcome. Of she, everybody obviously knows how the outcome goes. But, no, this was definitely one of those fights where when we were watching Josh, we were looking at her like, is this really happening? We didn't expect this kind of a fight to yeah. to make it all five rounds, but yeah, I, I think I said you know. maybe maybe third round. You were like, I don't know, I could see it in the second. You know, I, I, I felt like she was going to knock her out. You know, it's just mm. she's got power. It, either knock her out or get her in a submission. Uh, yeah. You know, she's got she's she's tough. Zhang Wei Li, and she's so yeah. she's so fast. She's got she a throws, dog. Her. She throws like five hundred punches per second. I mean, she's sure. she's stupid <laughs> fast. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on. We've got the main event. This one was another one that I was really excited for, seeing everything built up to it. I, I, you know, I didn't feel like Jamal Hill quite earned his spot to get here, but he is a dog. He's he's tough. I'll give him that much. Uh, one thing we were saying, he definitely had a little belly hanging over his shorts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so maybe get yourself in a little bit better better shape to you know go against a guy like Alex Pereira. Uh, and yeah. and uh, our cousin started walking away. I was like, no, 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 get out here. He's walking out. You got you got to watch this dude walk out. A scary dude. And then Joe Rogan even mentioned it too. He, he's he's got the scariest walk out for sure. The way he mm-hmm. walks up, all you know, ready to roll, and, ready and then gets up there and does the whole bow and arrow thing. He Jamal it. Hill though, yeah, he he catches it. He catches the arrow and snaps it over his his knee. If you're gonna do that, I expect you to come in there and attack. Don't don't look like you're scared to get hit by this dude. Then, you know, yeah. if you're gonna act like that. Don't be don't be you gotta scared. Back it up. I definitely felt like he looked a little scared. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was a little it was weird, but the 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 legendary part of this fight though, he gets a little bit of a nut tap, and yeah, <laughs> Herb starts coming in there. He says, "No, no, no, no. I'm good. Watch Bow! this." <laughs> and he's out. Like I'm pretty sure it was the very next punch. He knocks yeah, him on his left. butt. Yeah. And just goes to town on him. Alex Pereira. He he's man. He, <laughs> Animal. He might go down as like the best fighter ever. I mean, if he keeps this up, I, I I don't know. I can't think of too many guys better. I mean, he's he's only got eleven fights under his under his belt. I mean, I guess he might not be able to to steal the best ever because there's guys like John Jones or Khabib uh, that go. that are undefeated. <laughs> I was but waiting for something. Alex Pereira <laughs> will will put his name up there for sure. Yeah. Um, just because this dude, and and I think he's improved. In every single fight I see him in, mm-hmm. and he's he's a scary dude. I, I don't I don't I don't want to be caught in the same building as him. No, no doubt, no doubt. And and but let me the one thing to your point is the reason I say that is because my boy John ain't never been knocked out, yeah. right? And uh and he can't say the same. So because Izzy did catch him, uh, he did. But I don't Didn't think he come Izzy back wants and catch no Izzy? Uh, no, that was the last time they fought because now they're saying that they need to rematch and Izzy's like, why? Because if he beats me, uh, then he, you know, Yard just going to say, oh, it's three to one or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, 
but he got caught. He was whooping Izzy, and and he just got caught with one. So, uh, mm-hmm. but I don't think that Jamel Hill. Like I don't. I don't think that fight was like even leading into it. I didn't think it was going to be a fight. I thought. Pereira was going to knock him out. I, w- and, I was uh, interested to see how fast Alex Pereira could come in there and whoop him. Uh, Jeremy yeah. and I were talking about this. I was like, man, I feel like the odds for this one should be like in the plus two two fifty for Jamal Hill or something. You know, like he should yeah. be a big time underdog. But they were like dead on even. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe maybe the odds makers know something about this that I don't know. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. We were definitely questioning a lot of those odds, and we were just like, this shouldn't this this doesn't seem right. But I mean, if you if you haven't seen Alex Pereira's intro to going to the <laughs> ring, go and pull it up just because you will literally get goosebumps watching it. Cause I'm not going to lie. I did. And that was definitely unbelievable. I mean, think it, it happened off in the first round with three minutes in. I mean, that will, you know, you'll see that, that meme rolling around. Watch this. Just, just let me take step over here. And I'll step just, back, I'll just do the rest of the work. Yeah, I mean, he said, "Yeah, he it hurt, to... but let me finish this first. Then we can, <laughs> then we can worry about my nuts." Hey, and just... uh, something else, like so, he had a broken. Uh, Alex Pereira had a broken pinky toe, like a couple weeks prior to that yeah, fight. Yeah, really, you saw him look at it. Yeah, I was like, "What the heck is he doing?" And then I heard uh, Dana White, Dana White talk about that. He he brought that up. He was like, "Yeah," I, I said, "What did he break his toe?" And he, they said, "Yeah, he did that a couple weeks ago." So yeah, he just walks into there. Broken. I mean, and this is a dude that is known for. It was on the the foot that he uses for that back that back kick, and and it's like, uh, you know, and mm-hmm. and uh, Joe Rogan and uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, who was it? It was Joe Rogan and uh, Daniel Cormier. It, that, that's who it was. He was talking yeah. to about it where he's got that scary kick because his hips don't even turn. You know, he's yeah. his his back foot comes up mm-hmm. there and catches you, and it hurts. And Daniel Cormier was saying that. Uh, you know, that he was like, he wanted to feel it. And so he's like, hey, kick, you know, give me a leg kick. And he's like, okay. And he, he kicks him once. He said, no, don't hold back. He said, yeah. are you sure? He said, yeah, I, I want to see because it doesn't look like it hurts. Like it just, he's not putting any kind of hip in it or nothing. And he yeah. does it. And, and Daniel was like, hey, I thought he broke my shin. <laughs> you know, so I mean, just, just crazy, crazy power back there. And that's the foot that he's using to kick. And he has a broken pinky toe, keeps on mm. kicking with it anyways. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it was an absolutely amazing fight card. Uh, if you guys haven't gone back to watch, at least go watch the BMF title. That one was one to watch for sure. And then watch Yuri Prohaska. I think that's another one. He he, he got a, a, a performance of the night too. Um, so go go and watch him too because I think he's a, na- he's a name that deserves to get a second shot up there at Alex Pereira for sure. But an amazing card all the way around. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. We had so much fun watching it. Now we had even more fun being able to relive it, go back a couple of nights and talk about it again. Uh, we had a lot yeah. of fun being able to talk with you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate all of you guys for tuning in, for uh, catching us. And, and you know, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we thank you for, for viewing us. If you're listening, thanks for listening. Um, but if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can hit that like button and comment down below. It's the best way to help us on YouTube. Uh, and then over on, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. It's the best way to help us there. Uh, and then you can also follow or subscribe on those platforms as well. Um, you follow us on social media, show us some love over there. We'll, uh, we'd love to see more from you guys and see some more support. But We thank you all so much for everything you've done and for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.